Good afternoon and welcome here to Rochester High School, Bob Copeland Field for a TRC baseball matchup between the Rochester Zebras and the Northfield Norse. I mentioned Rochester drew Wabash. Northfield also drew a TRC team. They're going to play Southwood. They're our tribals at Caston. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Josh. So somebody from MSD of Wabash County is going to be going home yep. in that first round game. Northfield is 3-8 and eight and Southwood's 1-8. and eight, So both teams struggling a little bit this year. Somebody's going to win a sectional game. All right, okay. so we're going to see Tanner Reinerts at second base today. We have not seen him play there. We've seen him play a lot of third base. Yeah. But he is at second today. Of course, Braden Zink plays a lot of second base, but he's not playing second base today. That's because he's on the mound. Who do they have over at third? Shortstop, Dylan Tomlinson. That'll be Hunter Campbell. Campbell at third, McLaughlin at short, Reinerts at second, Huffman at first, Cypher catching Zink. First pitch of the game is from Zink to Tomlinson. High for ball. Dylan Tomlinson comes in hitting 538. He is 21 for 39. No homers, four RBIs. He has four doubles on the year. Four of his 21 hits have been for extra bases. Ball two. If you're watching at home, I just switched that camera angle to, uh, got a camera out in center field. So, trying to get, uh, you know, some different angles and some different things. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that works out good. Foul ball, two and one. Eventually, we were going to probably, not until next year, but we're looking at maybe putting some more cameras out there. And the, netting is, the netting is great, right? But uh, it just makes it tough to film. Foul ball. Yeah, it was interesting. Sometimes, not because I like the sound of my own voice, but I'll go and watch some of the old the video from last week's games, and it's, yeah, it's, you know, when Tarek hits the game-winning hit against Southwood and it's to deep right center, you can't. Yeah, I, f I feel like I'm doing a radio call sometimes, too, because it's not easy. But because of the ability to pan now with this, it's going to be a lot better. Three and two. Leonard to center. That's a base hit. Dylan Tomlinson leads off the game with a single. That was a good at bat. Uh, saw a lot of pitches and gets a hit, and the leadoff man is aboard. Yeah, the way he was following pitches straight back was a sign that he was he was close on the timing, and mm -hmm. he finally figured it out there. First pitch to Brandon McKillop. McKillop is a sophomore and a center fielder for the Dorseman. Hitting 278 on the year. 10 for 36. Runner back. It was Evan Elliott who started against Carroll the other day. Pitch is high. No, there's a strike. Excuse me. 0 no 1. It was a strike. Kids? 
Leonard foul, 0-2 the count. And that is going to be a base hit. Well, that was... A, that took a weird... Or was hitting a weird spot? Had some had, weird spin on it? Yeah, weird spin. <laughs> kind of hit the lip of the uh, outfield there and, and spun even weirder off of that. Jacob Snyder's the batter, senior first baseman. Strike. Now batting, Jacob Snyder. Right? Foul ball. Another foul. Braden pitched the first four and two thirds innings in that win over Southwood. Got a no decision. He had eight strikeouts in that game, but he also walked six. Got him swinging with a high fastball. That is Braden Zink at his best. He'll throw you a high fastball, and then you think you catch up to it, and then he'll throw you an even higher fastball, mm -hmm. and you miss it. And he is just really good at that. So strikeout number one, and that'll bring up Reese Rosine. As we met, strike call, as we mentioned in the pregame, Northfield's hit seven home runs as a team, and Rosine has five of them. He's hitting 324. He has 12 hits, but nine of them for extra bases, four doubles and five homers. He is a junior. Pitch is high. Well, if you're Zink, you want to be careful here. Obviously, the leading home run hitter for Northfield with two on. I don't want to give him anything over the plate. Gotcha. That was a nice high tight Ball. one. This is a big uh, at bat for both teams early in the game. Low and away. Two and two. That is going to be a base hit in the left field. Running third is Tomlinson, but a hold there. Verda charges. Hits the cutoff man, McLaughlin. Bases loaded, one out. Courtesy runner for the catcher. That is Pratt, Cameron Pratt. Cameron Pratt is a freshman. Strike called on the first pitch to Bryce Smith, the DH. Bryce Smith is a 188 hitter. He does have one homer and four RBIs. Nice block there by Cypher. You have to kind of relax yourself when that ball gets in the dirt. You can't get too tense. Jake's just really good at that. 
Ground ball. That's a base hit in the hole. One run's going to score. Here comes McKillop, and the throw is going to be late. Two-run single for Bryce Smith. Northfield takes a 2-0 lead. Pratt moves up to second. He holds there. That was really not a good idea to throw home. They didn't have much of a chance, but... Now batting right fielder, Bruce. Thankfully, the, it didn't cost him an extra base there. So first and second with one out, and that'll bring up Ethan Bruce, the freshman right fielder. That is an offer. 0-1 the count. Bruce is a 143 hitter. 4 for 28 on the year. Strike. Well, you don't see right-handed hitters pull zinc very often. But both Rosine and Smith did it. So this is a Northfield team. They Swing and a miss. Got him. Strike at number two. This is a Northfield team that scored 65 runs in 11 games. So about six a game. Yeah. Again, just as a point of comparison, the Zebras have played 11, uh, 11 games and scored uh, 94 runs. Dylan Osborne, the batter. He is the sophomore second baseman, hitting 158. 2 nothing Northfield, top of the first. Pitch is low. Now batting second baseman, Dylan Osborne. The windscreen's all over the fence now. Three and zero. And Coach Beeler was out there working on that uh, earlier before the game, and yeah, there's nice. a lot of a lot of zip ties involved with that. Three zero. Strike. That was a victim of the uh, wind that week there when they played Pioneer and CMA. It just uh, kind of had uh, wreaked havoc on that windscreen out there in the outfield. Swing and a miss. Nice high inside fastball yeah. there by Zink. Well, Osborne's a 158 hitter. Again, we haven't seen him play before, but if he's a 158 hitter, I think you're going to want to challenge him with fastballs and not get too clever here. Mm -hmm. The 3 2. Got him swinging. Nice job by Zink. He was down in the count 3-0, but came back to strike him out. But Northfield scores two runs on four hits. No errors and two left at the end of half an inning. It's Northfield 2 and Rochester 0, and you're watching RTC TV. Welcome Four. back here, Bob Copeland Field, as we move into the bottom of the first. The Norse got two on the Zebras in the top, Val, and uh, it was eh, a little bit of... Uh, I think Zink just needed to kind of settle in a little bit there, but uh, some pretty good hitting, too, by the Norse in the top of the first. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, yeah, they, they, I think Northfield did a great job. I mean, they were they were timing the fastball pretty well. I think and then Braden got a little bit better at locating the fastball as the inning went on. Kind of a big shout-out to uh, new Winnemac girls basketball head coach, Tony Stasiak, watching. Yeah, tonight. I know he's a big baseball fan. Yeah, he's, in fact, he's more than a big baseball right, fan. He's a, right. He's a former baseball coach. He's it'll be McLaughlin, Medina, and Reinhardt stew for the Zebras here in the bottom of the first against Jaden Truman. Jaden Truman's a senior. He is 1-2 and two with a 5.35 ERA. This is his fourth appearance on the year in his second start. 17 innings, 24 hits allowed, 16 runs, 13 earned runs. And here's the stat that really jumps out at you. 17 innings and only one walk. 
Wow. But he only has nine strikeouts. Hmm. So he is a put-the-ball-in-play type. First mm -hmm. pitch outside to Tarek. Tarek comes in hitting 441. He is 15 for 34. One homer, 13 RBIs. Outside. It's not the Val Jinx there, is it? 2-0 and count. One walk and <laughs> 17 innings. <laughs> It's called Val reading the stat sheet and, <laughs> and you take from it what you want. Two and one. Ball three. Just missed high on that uh, curve. Based on balls. <laughs> you, did you did it. <laughs> now, to be fair to Tarek, I mean, he, he's got a great eye. That's his 13th walk in the year. He's, he's, he's averaging more than one walk a game. Uh, 13 okay. walks, and this is the 12th game of the year. Okay, I'll, I'll give you Tarek, but if, you, if okay. he walks. Truman throws over to first. If he walks Ethan, then it's it's definitely the Val uh, mm -hmm. curse. Let's see if they check out Mr. Rosine's arm here early on. Ground ball. Knocked down by Truman. Throws to first. Got him. On the play, McLaughlin moves to second. Now batting second baseman, Tanner Reinhardt. And that'll bring up Tanner Reinhardt, the freshman second baseman. Tanner comes in hitting 417. He is 15 for 36 on the year. No homers, 12 RBIs. Inside. Is that like a changeup? Truman steps off and looks back McLaughlin. The second baseman, Osborne, is holding close, but that's really not tamping down Tarek's lead too much. He's Tarek's got really good instincts on that. Now watch, he'll get picked off. <laughs> yeah. Northfield's team, uh, we mentioned uh, Truman's team, personal ERA is 5.35. Northfield's team ERA is 5.80. Fouled off. Um Truman is second on the team in innings pitch with 17. Uh, Tomlinson, who's their third baseman today, is their leader in innings pitch with 23 innings. Ball three. So maybe Medina wasn't uh, breaking the jinx. He was just a pause. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Liner, Tomlinson can't handle it in the left field. And then the ball gets by the left fielder, and then Tarek falls down. And now Tarek gets up. He's going to try and score, and he will make it. But is Tarek hurt? Mm. Landed pretty hard on that left uh, side there. Looks like he's holding he, his elbow. Yeah, he bit. wiped out. <laughs> Josh said he had a flat tire. <laughs> oh, Josh. I thought, the, I thought the term was sniper. We'll call that a single and an E7. So two to one now. Aaron Huffman's the batter, and he's down on the count 0-1. Aaron, the junior first baseman. Curveball outside. Huffman hitting 308 on the year. Eight for twenty-six. Swing and a miss. One and two. Well, we've uh, there's been a lot of talk, I mean, especially after that Southwood game about the zebras struggling with guys who throw a lot of off-speed stuff. That is in the hole. Oh my! Long throw to first. Not uh, in time. Infield single. 
Yeah, if he would have got that, that would have been impressive. He was deep in the hole. Nice effort by Fisher. Really nice effort. It was. Great, that, great backhand, but he was clear on the uh, grass, almost almost the third baseman spot. That will bring up the senior right fielder, Evan Elliott. Evan hitting 268, but that batting average has been on the way up. He is 11 for 41. One homer, eight RBIs. Rochester's hit three home runs as a team, and Northfield has hit seven. So let's see if... There goes Huffman, and the ball's ripped foul. Huffman got a good jump. And this is Rochester with uh, 42 stolen bases as a team through 11 games. McLaughlin with 11 leads the team. Ooh, swing and a miss, and this uh, Tuffman will steal the bag. He'll steal it without a throw. For Aaron, that is his second stolen base of the season. 0-2 oh, to count to Elliott. That was, boy, that was... That's a nice little uh, change of pace yeah. there. Popped up. Shallow center. Not very deep. It's caught. Yeah. And the runners hold. Tanner thought the better of that one there. Not hit very deep. Yeah, nice throw by McKillop. But again, that was... He was probably no more than about three or four steps beyond the infield. Yeah. So runners at second and third with two outs for Braden Zink. Braden is the pitcher today. He's hitting 231 on the year. Foul now. Mm. <laughs> Sends that right back into the dugout. Yeah. <laughs> That's where you, you point out the field of play. Hit it there. Yeah. I think his teammates were too happy with him on that one. 0-2. Oh that one, uh, boy, I was just lobbed in there and the timing of that. Fly ball to center. McKillop back on it. He's got it, and that retires the side. So Rochester had runners, two men on with one out, but both Elliott and Zink fly up to center field. Rochester in the bottom of the first. They score one. There were two hits. One error and two left. At the end of one inning, Northfield leads Rochester 2-1, to one, and you're watching RTC TV. Welcome Four. back here to Bob Copeland Field. In the top of the second, Northfield leads Rochester 2-1 to one after one inning there. A couple, uh, couple of Zebras left on in scoring position there in the bottom of the first for the Zebras, Val. Right. I mean, uh, again, he's not a big strikeout pitcher. Only nine strikeouts in 18 innings, but he, he did get some soft contact there. It'll be um, Fisher, Truman, and Tomlinson due for Northfield in the top of the second. Okay, Mr. Screeton, here we go. Today is this Cub player's birthday. The Cubs team, it's his 31st birthday. He's played second base, shortstop, and third base for the Cubs so far this year. He has hit 98 career home runs. Not Chavez, but uh, oh, I agree. So you got it out. Today is Jonathan VR's 31st birthday. Happy birthday, Jonathan VR. He has 98 career home runs, and he has over 200 stolen bases, so he's kind of a nice mixture of power and speed. Strike, good curveball over the outside corner by Fisher. I think that's the best breaking ball he's thrown. 0-2 oh, the count. Low for ball. <laughs> two and two.
Today is this ex-Cubs birthday. He also played, not only did he play for the Cubs, but he played football at the University of Texas. Who am I talking about, Mr. Screeton? Mm. Two and two, the well, they had the umpire in the mat. Yeah, fouled off. And, I think uh, Jake's going to walk that out and give the umpire. Usually it's the umpire who gives the catcher a chance to... Is that Mr. Adams behind the plate? I think it is. I'm guessing foul. Uh-huh. Is it Kerry Wood? No. He played on the 1984 Cubs. He was acquired in a trade from the Phillies. Got him swinging with a high fastball. Fisher is the first out here in the top of the second. Strikeout number four for Zink. All four of his outs have been strikeouts. Now batting pitcher, Truman. Jaden Truman, the pitcher, is the batter. Swing and a miss, 0-1. Jaden Truman, this is... He's 0 for 2 in the season. is not matter that much. I drive to center. That's a base hit. That's his first hit of the season. Now batting leadoff hitter, Dylan Tomlinson. Pitcher and catcher. Uh, courtesy runner for the pitcher. First hit of the season. Yep, that's wow. They look good. Yeah. Uh, that is Nelson, who was out running. Justin Nelson. Today is his birthday. He played on the 1984 Cubs. He was acquired from the Phillies in a deal that also involved Dickie Knowles. High for a ball. Dylan Tomlinson singled and scored back in the first. It wasn't Lee, was it? No. Little floater to second base, Han Reinerts makes the catch. He had to kind of leave his feet a little bit, but that was pretty easy. Kind of a looping liner. Two down. Hanging on at first is Nelson. That'll bring up the so sophomore center fielder, Brandon McKillop. Cubs got Derek Lee in a trade with the Marlins. Uh, this It's this guy's birthday, and the Cubs got him in a trade with the Phillies. Strike. And he played linebacker at the university on the football team at the University of Texas. A swing and a miss. Good high fastball there. Again, that high fastball, it's so tempting. You think you can hit it. Fastball away, one and two. Eighty-four Cubs was a long time ago, Val. I can I can tell you some eighty-six Bears, but uh, 80, 84 <laughs> Cubs. I was nine years old at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Popped up. Tarek should have that. He does to retire the side. I did watch a lot of Cubs baseball back then, though, with the uh, with WGN and. Mm -hmm. We could we could get that on the TV, and that was always a favorite of mine when uh, I was working on the farm with my uncle. He would say, what are we doing this afternoon, you know, after lunch? And he's like, well, 
Cubs are playing. We don't have really a whole lot going on. Let's watch the game. <laughs> All right. All right. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left at the end of an inning and a half. Northfield leads Rochester 2-1. to one. Yep, Tony Stasiak just texted me with the correct answer. All right, I haven't gone to commercial yet. What is it? Tony Stasiak got it right? Yeah. All right. He played right field in the 1984 Cubs. After Ron Sano passed away, he replaced him in the broadcasting booth next to Pat Hughes. He's from Texas. Keith Moreland. Today is Keith Moreland's 68th birthday. Happy birthday, Keith Moreland. All right. First pitch at the bottom of the second inning. Truman to Jake Cipher is swung in and missed at for a strike. 0 and 1. Cipher will be followed by Hunter Campbell and Colton Faverda. Breaking ball in there for a strike. <laughs> I mean, what do you do with that, right? It, it just kind of dropped right down in the zone. Cypher hitting 304 on the year, 7 for 23. Well, that's what you do. You hit Wait the next pitch into the 5 6 hole for a base hit. Jake is just scorching hot. I think he was hitting 143. Prior to the Logansport game, yeah, that was less than a week ago. Now he's, now he's hitting over 300. Oh wow! And that'll bring up Hunter Campbell, the third baseman. Which means, in the meantime, he's been uh, hitting probably 500. Yeah, to get that average up that yeah. much. Yeah. Hmm? Landon Bumford's the courtesy runner at first. There was one Hall of Famer born on May 2nd. He was born on May 2nd, 1887. He played second base, mostly for the A's and the White Sox. Who am I talking about? 1887. He had over 3,300 career hits. He's one of the, when you talk about the greatest second baseman in the history of baseball, this guy's name often comes up. Fly ball to left. And it is caught. For the first out of the inning, Campbell now 0 for 1. A nice can of corn there by Eli Crow out in left field. You know, part of me wants to say, did you at least have to look this up? But the other part of me says, no, he probably didn't. <laughs> well, I didn't yeah. know what his birthday was. I, <laughs> I, knew, I knew that he had over 3,300 hits, though, because I'm one of those baseball nerds. <laughs> Colton Favre to the batter. Ripped to left field. Why, that's hit deep. Crow back. Back to the wall. It's off the wall on the fly. Crow handles the carom. Trying to score. Crow misses the cutoff, man, but it's still going to be a close play at the plate, oh, and he him. is out. Yeah, good play. Gee. I think that was the – Crow missed the cutoff, man. Was that the third baseman who handled the cut? Yeah, it was. So it's a double for Faverda, but Bumford is out trying to score from first. Seven, five, two, and Rosine applied the tag at the plate. Runner at second with one out. Button tried by McLaughlin. Truman, no play. He'll have to take. He'll have to put that one in his back pocket. It's a bunt single for McLaughlin. It was one for one. First and third with one out, and that'll bring up Ethan Medina. Ethan grounded at the pitcher his first time up. Zebras trail two to one. Bottom of the second. Throw over McLaughlin back. Medina came in hitting 436. Outside and Tarek will take second. Again, you throw over there, you're not gonna you're not gonna discourage Tarek at all. He's mm -hmm. he's gonna time you, he's gonna figure you out. And that takes the force out of the equation. There are two out. Fly ball to center. McKillop makes the catch, and that retires the side. Rochester gets three hits in the inning, but they don't score. No runs, three hits. No errors and two left. At the end of two innings, Northfield leads Rochester 2-1. to one. 
and you're watching RTC TV4. Moving into the top of the third here, Bob Copeland Field. The score remains Northfield 2, Rochester 1. It was a uh, good inning there in the bottom of the second valve for the Zebras as far as getting the, the bat on the ball, finally uh, getting the timing down a little bit, but uh, unable to uh, to get any runs across. And you know the the play at the plate there. Uh, you know with Bumford getting tagged out, that was uh, you know uh, you could see Coach uh, waving him on. So I mean he was doing what the coach told him to, just uh, wasn't able to uh, to make it in. Right, and Corey Good, he's not afraid. I mean he he said, I mean in interviews, in post game interviews, he said if they teams make plays on us, then like that, then yeah. But it's hard. It's not easy. So, I mean he. I'm sure he doesn't regret that decision. Just Northfield made a good play. Yeah, yeah, they did. Softball update: North Miami leads Tippecanoe Valley three to nothing in the third. That's a three-run lead for Lauren Duncan, and she has been terrific on in the circle for them. It'll be Snyder, Rosine, and Smith due for Northfield here in the top of the third. So we didn't. The uh, second baseman with over 3,300 hits, one of the all-time great second basemen, born on this date in 1887. Do we know who? Do you at home knew who I'm talking about? He played for the White Sox for a long, long time in the 19-teens. But also played for those great Philadelphia A's teams under Connie Mack. Oh. Cypher takes one off the head. Uh, he put his head down. I think he thought the ball was in his mitt. He put his head down a little early, and it bounced soccer, up. Yeah. Soccer tryouts are in the fall, Jake. <laughs> yeah, you don't see him heading a, a softball or baseball very often. The 1-1. One, one. The 1-1. One, one. ball, 1-2. One Snyder struck out his first time up. I am talking about Eddie Collins. After Joe Morgan passed away, there was a lot of talk about is Joe Morgan the greatest second baseman of all time, or is Ryan Sandberg, or is... But Eddie Collins certainly would have a claim to that. Grounder, right side. Reinert stays down on it and throws over. Well, Tanner, that's a nice play. Uh, good footwork. Over 3,300 hits hmm. for Eddie Collins. He's a Hall of Famer. He's the only Hall of Famer that was born on May 2nd. So in, in relation to that time frame, how many more hits is that than most of the people in that era? Because that seems like a lot. Yeah. I mean, I know Miguel Cabrera, as uh, Rosine grounds out to Hunter Campbell at third, two up, two down. I'm going to say there's still fewer than 30 in the 3,000-hit club in the history of baseball. Mm-hmm. Eddie Collins played from 1906 to 1930. He made his big league debut when he was 19, and he played until he was 43. He was played for the A's from 1906 to 1914, and for the White Sox from 1915 to 1926. I drive to left, base hit, a single for Bryce Smith. He is two for two. So he was on that 1917 White Sox team that won the World Series, and then they didn't win another World Series until 2005. And, of course, Eddie Collins was a second baseman on that Black Sox team. But he was not involved, as I recall. He had 333 career batting average for Eddie Collins. Strike. Like home, like home runs were really, really rare back then. I mean, Eddie Collins' career high in homers for a season was six. Eddie Collins had seven, not only did he have 3,315 career hits, but he had 741 stolen bases. He's among the all-time leaders in stolen bases as well. Inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1939, Eddie Collins. Fought off. He is 11th on the all-time hits list, 3,315. Hmm. 
Yeah, you saw a commercial. Huh? Yeah, good. Cream Dunk. He's a good golfer. Golfer legend. Derek Jeter, by the way, is sixth with 3,465. Just to maybe put that in perspective. One and two. Got him. And that retires the side. Cypher tagged him, I think, just to make sure, but I think he caught it on the fly anyway. Yeah. Strikeout number five. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left in the top of the third for Northfield. At the end of two and a half, Northfield leads Rochester 2-1, to one, and you're watching RTC. We're into the bottom of the third here at Bob Copeland Field. The score remains 2-1 in favor of the Norse. It's going to be Tanner Reinerts leading things off here for the Zebras in the bottom. Yep. Mentioned Eddie Collins is 11th on the all-time hits list. Albert Pujols is 12th. Eddie Collins with 33-15, and Albert Pujols has 33-10. So he's going to be, Eddie's going to get passed up. I think Eddie can handle it. He died in 1951. I think he's. <laughs> Eddie Collins at 33-15, and Paul Molitor had 33-19. So Pujols will be passing both of those guys, unless something really crazy happens. And Carl Yastrzemski at 34-19. I think Albert's got a ways to go there. Albert passed up Willie Mays on the hits list earlier this year. Popped up. Right field. The right fielder is under it and makes the catch. That is Ethan Bruce who makes the catch on Reinerts' fly ball. How many years has Pujols been in the majors? He's got to be pushing 20, isn't he? Since 2000? 22? No, since 2001. So Pujols is in a 22nd big league season. Wow. Aaron Huffman's the batter. Fouled off. Huffman reached in an infield single his first time up. And Zebras left two on in the first and left two on in the second. One and one. That one didn't drop. Yeah. <laughs> Release point off on that. That was that was a fastball. Two and one. Popped up. Foul. Rosine. Oh. Dropped. A little dance with the ball and uh, ends up dropping it. Are we going to call that an E2 or a no play? I'm thinking about calling that a no play. That was not an easy play at all because he had he got twisted around and it didn't spend a lot of time in the air. Yeah, if he would have made that, I think that would have been an extraordinary play. Yeah. So I would call that a I no would, play. I would let two and you two. go with that. Fly ball to left. And the catch by Crow. Two up, two down. Elliot. Bring up Evan Elliott. Evan flew out to center his first time up. Nobody on and two out. Let's see if I mean let's see if Evan's thinking about hitting a home run here. Nope. Well, first pitch swinging and he lines it up the middle for a base hit. Elliott now one for two. He's starting to get you can tell Evan's getting his timing down. It's a little bit of a slump there. Well, and just making better contact yeah. these last few games. You know, much like the Southwood game, this is kind of throwing the zebras off here. The mm -hmm. the change, mm -hmm. the throw change over. in speeds is really yeah. you know throwing their timing off. Throw over runner back. Line drive to left. That will drop. Foul. Oh, just, just foul. foul. Oh, and one the count to Zink. Zink flew out to center his first time. Maybe a foot outside of the line there on that one. Yep. First game. Mm -hmm. 
Pitches outside. Throw to second, not in time. It's a stolen base for Elliott. Well, the thing is, when the pitcher doesn't throw very hard, and he's throwing a lot of off-speed stuff, those are pitches you can run on. Mm -hmm. And if you if you time the move, well, you have a good chance. That's three stolen bases in this game for the Zebras already rolling in the third inning. Line drive to center. That's a base hit. Running on contact is Elliott. He should be able to score, and he will. Two out RBI single for Braden Zink, and this game is tied. Courtesy runner. Who is that in there? Is that Bowers? Drew Bowers? Mm. No, it's Young. Gavin Young. He's I was going to say a little, yeah. Drew's not that tall yet. Yeah. Pitch knocked down by Rosine. Nice job there. We talked about Cypher kind of relaxing his body, and Rosine did something similar there. Want to know the count to Jake? Jake Cypher singled back in the second inning. One for one. Throw over. Young back. Inside. No, strike. Never mind. Strike. One and one. Just caught the inside corner. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. Not in time. Stolen base for Young. One and two the count. Cypher has struck out nine times this year in 23 at-bats. Foul ball. <laughs> Foul ball. Just got a tip, and Ro Rosine couldn't hang on. One and two. Just trying to get the timing down on that change. Mm -hmm. One and two. Ground ball, third base. Throw to f no play, no play. Tomlinson charged it, fielded it, and then looked back at Gavin Young just to see if he had maybe turned the round of the bag too far, but he didn't. So it's an infield hit for Cypher. He's, when you're hot, you're hot. You're even getting base hits when you top one on the third baseline. He's two for two. First and third, two outs. The batter's Hunter Campbell. High uh, for ball. Is that Bumford up there? Running again? I would assume so. He yeah. ran for him last time. Popped up. Right side. Caught by the second baseman. Osborne, and that retires the side. But Rochester scores one run, three hits. No errors and two left. At the end of three innings, Rochester and Northfield are tied 2-2, and you're watching RTC TV. Back here at Bob Copeland Field, the Zebras do get one run in the bottom of the third, and we are tied at two as we move into the top of the fourth. And uh, it seems like maybe Rochester is getting the timing down a little bit. They're starting to hit the ball a little bit harder and, and get some uh, some more contact. Yeah. Rochester has eight hits, one walk, and they've stolen three bases, but they only have two runs to show for it. And the IHSA Board of Directors has voted to add boys volleyball and girls wrestling as quote-unquote emerging sports. Huh. So they will not have a tournament yet? Is that, is that what that means? I mean, they're supporting it, but they yeah. won't have a postseason yet. I'll get, I'll get back to you on that. I'll, I'll read up on it some more. That just means he's old. Yeah, I'll be my seventh year here. Catch up. 
eat my food with us. Osborne, Fisher, and Truman, the 7-8-9 hitters in the North Field lineup, are due here in the top of the fourth. And the first pitch to Dylan Osborne, the sophomore second baseman, results in a swing and a miss, 0-1-1. Another high fastball there by Zink. Got it by him. Low. Or no, strike two. Strike two, that was a swing. Mm-hmm. The IHSA says that, and I believe this, they said the. A lot of girls' volleyball coaches were promoting boys' volleyball, and a lot of wrestling coaches have been promoting girls' wrestling. And I know Clint Gard. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. I know Coach uh, Kirby over at Valley have been big proponents of girls' wrestling. Mm hmm. One and two. Uh, Coach Gard, I mean, they had, what, seven girls that wrestled last year? Yeah, yeah I think it was six, yeah. But swinging a miss, Osborne strikes out for the second time in as many at bats today. One up, one down. Let to bring up Mason Fisher. Now batting, Mason Fisher. Fisher fouls one off. Down the right field line. Two and one the count to Fisher. Fisher, a 360 hitter. Nine for 25 on the year. Make it nine for 26 after he struck out in his first at bat today. Count now two and two. Two, two. Got him. Boy, that was wicked. Yeah. I don't know what that pitch was. But that had great late movement. Strikeout number seven. Three consecutive strikeouts for Zink. And that'll bring up the senior pitcher, Jaden Truman, who singled his first time up. Hello. Now that and Jaden Truman. Northfield scored both of their runs in the top of the first and a two-run single by Bryce Smith. Rochester got one in the bottom of the first and one in the bottom of the third. The run in the first scored on an error, and the run in the third scored on a two-out RBI single by Zink. Two and one. That was a nice pitch. I think, like you said, Brayton seems to be really dangerous with those high fastballs. Mm -hmm. Haven't really had anybody be able to catch up to it. Fall off. Two and two. Three two. Ooh. Got him looking. Yep, he knew it. <laughs> I said, "Okay, that looked like a really good pitch." It was a little bit of delay there on the call, but that was uh, out number three. Sink strikes out the side. One two three at the end of three and a half innings. Rochester two, Northfield two, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field. Northfield goes down one two three in the top of the fourth. Fervida set to lead off here in the bottom as we are tied at two apiece between the Zebras and the Norse. Well, you have some news, Mr. Screeton. Jeremy Gray has officially been named the public address announcer for all IU basketball games, women and men. He had taken over on an interim basis after the legendary Chuck Crabb retired. 
And now Jeremy Gray has the job full time. It's been it's official. I did not know. Patrick is not there. He's announcing this like uh, somebody who was watching would actually care who the IU announcer is. Mm-hmm. Oh. For Verda, McLaughlin, and Medina. For Verda puts it in play. Tomlinson has it and fires to first. You know you're in Boilermaker country, right, Val? <laughs> Lead off hitter, Tarek McLaughlin. Tarek McLaughlin walked and reached on a bunt single. He has a one for one. He has scored a run. Swings at the first pitch. Fly ball to left. Crow misses the ball. And is an E7. <coughs> he, I don't know what happened there. He, he was there, and then he kind of had to side saddle it, and then he missed it completely. He, he kind of, I think he might have gotten in a little too far. Yeah, you can tell he's kind of kicking himself out there. Yeah, misjudged the depth a little bit and overran it, I think. So, Traverta swings at the first pitch. McLaughlin swings at the first pitch. Now we have a runner at first with one out, and Medina, who is 0 for 2, will step up. Let's see if Ethan's kind of made the adjustment here. He has grounded to the pitcher and flown out to center. He swings at the first pitch. Ground ball to second. Throw out, throw back to second, safe. Medina now 0 for 3. McLaughlin moves to second. He's there with two outs, and Tanner Reinertz is the batter. So... Three batters all have swung at the first pitch and put it in play. Second baseman, Tanner Reinhardt. Tarek Speed was able to uh, keep him from getting doubled up there, but uh, down to two outs now. Pitch is low. Mason Fisher, the shortstop, jo jockeying right behind McLaughlin. Again with... Two outs. I think you'd want to give Reinerts a chance to swing the bat. You don't want to risk making the third out of third base. Liner. Base hit left field. McLaughlin's going to try and score. Here comes the throw by Crow. Late. Zebras take the lead. Another two out RBI hit. This time by Reinerts, and Rochester leads at 3 to 2. Take another look at that. Good piece of hitting by the freshman Reinerts. Like CS gets it past the third baseman. First baseman, Aaron Huffman. So Tanner now two for three. And that'll be an unearned run. Aaron Huffman's the batter. Swings and misses. So let's see if maybe the adjustment was just to be really aggressive because that is the, what, the fifth pitch of the inning? Yeah. And count is 0-1. There's a run in. Rounder to third. Trouble. Hobbled by Tomlinson. Throw to first. Got him. Good job of recovering there. No, no question about the arm strength of Tomlinson. Knocked it down, kept it in front of him, and got the out for Rochester in the bottom of the fourth. One run, one hit, one error, one left. At the end of four innings, Rochester leads Northfield 3-2, to two, and you're watching RTC. Back here to Bob Copeland as we move into the top of the fifth. The Zebras get another run in the bottom of the fourth. Now lead for the first time in the ballgame, 3-2. to two. And Val, you said it, they're, they're being more aggressive. They're swinging at a lot of first pitches, and, and it seems to be working for the Zebras. Yeah, so sometimes you don't want to do that, but I think now they've, they've just seen them enough. I mean, this is the third time through the order that they know what they like and they know what they don't like. But, yeah, boy, I mean, again, that style of pitching, it boy, it puts so much pressure on your defense because you're not getting any strikeouts. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, Northfield's been up. I mean, they've been pretty good, but, boy, they missed, they missed that fly ball to left field, and that was yeah. big. And the other error was big, too, in the bottom of the first because McLaughlin had spun out at third base. Right. He was going to have to hold, but the, because of the error, he was able to <laughs> score, too. So He blew a tire, as Josh yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, top of the fifth. Top of the order. Tomlinson, McKillop, and Snyder due for Northfield. 
North baseball, North Miami and Valley 0-0 in the fifth inning. Softball, North Miami leads Valley 3 to nothing. top of the fifth. Prue leading 4-2. Line to left, hit pretty well. Can Faverta get there? Yes, nice catch. <laughs> that was below his waist. That was a really good catch. Yeah. Yeah, Colton's, uh, he's, he's look, he looks like he's grown taller and bigger just since the end of football season. Yeah. Brandon McKillop, the batter. Off the end of the bat, foul. Is it going to be playable for Huffman? Yes. McKillop fouls to first. That was right off the end of the bat. Two up, two down. Zink has retired six batters in a row, and that'll bring up the first baseman, Jacob Snyder. Snyder is 0 for 2. He has struck out and grounded to second. First baseman, Jacob Snyder. Grounder, left side. Campbell throws to Huffman for the out, and that retires the side. So Did he throw three pitches? It was. You can count on one hand. I don't know if it was exactly three. It might have been, yeah. <laughs> Wow, we are in the lightning round here. One, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of four and a half, Rochester leads Northfield three to two, and you're watching RTC TV four. Well, Val, you said it. The lightning round for sure. That was a quick top of the, or, uh, yeah, top of the fifth, and Northfield goes down one, two, three. The Zebras lead three to two. Evan Elliott going to lead things off here as we move into the bottom of the fifth. Mm hmm. We have. Uh, Saturday, Friday. I'm trying to remember the date. Coming up, Friday, opening night for the Rochester Little League. Uh huh. So I think they are back to a full schedule this year. So really looking forward uh, to yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I talked to a lot of parents who, I mean, the COVID to not have their kid being able to play. I mean, that a lost year for Little League is yeah is that's huge. I mean, it's. Because you want kids to not only get out and get exercise, but to develop a love for the game. And they, how can they do that with not playing? I mean, they're not as interested in Eddie Collins as I am. <laughs> Elliot will be followed by Zink and Cipher. No offense, Val. I don't know that anybody is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one, one the count. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good inning filler, though. I mean, you kept that going for about an inning there. Mm -hmm. I like that. He has flown out to center and Elliot's flown out to center and single. One and one. One and two. Rochester opens on Friday. The Akron Youth League opens their season on Saturday. They have their parade and introductions on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's fun to see. I know um, they've applied for uh, all three rounds of the Town & Country Tournament at Rochester. So Round ball to second, and that is missed. That ball is missed by the second baseman, Osborne. We'll call that an E4. It had some spin on it. I mean, <laughs> again, that pitch was not a strike, but just hanging there like an apple off the tree. And that is error number three on Northfield for the day. So that'll bring up Zink. Let's see if Zink's in bunt mode. Throw to first safe. Now, uh, Elliot did steal a base back in the third inning the last time he was on, so I... Maybe you don't bunt, give your guy a chance to steal the bag first. First pitch swinging again. Ground ball to third. Tomlinson throws to first in time. And he's going to try it for third, and he is out. That's for a 5 3 5 double play. Well, it was really aggressive there. Mm hmm. Didn't uh, didn't even slow down a second. Just kind of rounded and kept going. And good play there by the Norse, getting back uh, that out after the error led to Elliott getting on base. Oh. 
Cypher follows the first pitch back, 0-1. Jake is 2-for-2 two two with two singles. Yeah, that's the... If, I know you say woulda, shoulda, coulda, but if Elliot had stopped at second, you would have had your hottest hitter maybe at the plate with a person, player in scoring position. Right. And Fly ball to left. Crow. He's got him. And that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the fifth, no runs, no hits, one error, nobody left. At the end of five innings, Rochester leads Northfield. 3-2 to two when you're watching RTC TV. Moving four. into the top of the sixth here, Bob Copeland Field. The Zebras still lead 3-2 to two after five innings. Again, Rochester will be back here at home on Wednesday night versus Manchester. On the road at Highland Park in Kokomo on Thursday, taking on Eastern. What did you say they were ranked this week? Number four. Number four in the 2A poll, so a tough one. Good, uh, good game to see where you're at. Tanner Reinert's now on the hill for the Zebras, and he will face Rosine Smith and Bruce. So five good innings for Braden Zink. In fact, uh, good might be an understatement. He was, he was pretty great, those, especially yeah. those last four innings. Got up to a rough start, but he retired the last seven batters he faced. He retired 11 of the last 12 batters he faced. And we've talked a lot about walks over the years for Braden. Do you know how many walks he had today? Zero. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I didn't and think that, he did. That yeah. is big progress. Eight, mm -hmm. Zero walks, eight Ks. Still looking for an update on that big, big baseball game in the Hoosier North today. Winnemac at North Judson. Both teams 6-0 and in the Hoosier North. North Judson is. North Judson is also 6-0. and Okay. They play today at Judson. They play tomorrow at Winnemac. Yeah. Two games set. Well, that's going to be uh, that's gonna be big if they split or if uh, one of them gets both wins. Yeah, if one Boy. of them can get both wins. Winnemac very impressive in sweeping that two-game set from Caston last week. I was just going to ask you what they did in the second game. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, 7-1 so to, to one and 15-2. to two. They got both of them. They got both of them. Comments today at Pioneer, and then tomorrow Pioneer travels to Caston. Yeah. Culver and Triton are beginning a two-game set today. At Triton today, they'll play at Culver tomorrow, and remember they drew each other for the sectional. Yeah. First pitch, Reinerts to Reese Rosine. Power threat, swing and a miss. Well, that's that's nice. You know, I'm, I imagine Rosine's probably thinking, okay, new guy in the game. I'm going to just pump a first pitch fastball over and. Tanner threw him the hook. That is a fastball. Fly ball to center. Can Menina get there? No. Base hit. Drops in as a uh, single. So Zink had retired, retired the last seven batters he faces, but Rosine greets Reinerts with a hit. Courtesy runner. That will be Cameron Pratt. Well, that makes that Caston and Pioneer series big for both teams. Yeah. And I'll be throw over, runner back. So I'm guessing it's is it spin and against Erickson today and then probably uh you know Duval against Gomer tomorrow, if I were just to guess. In terms of pitching matchups. I'm just, that's again that's just me guessing. I have not talked with the coaches for either team. One and oh. See, we're six outs away from a win. Pitch is high, throw to first, safe. A strike, 2-0 breaking ball, and he got it over. Good pitch. Pratt has seven stolen, uh, excuse me, start over again. Pratt does not have a stolen base on the air. Northfield as a team has 23 steals. Swing and a miss, two and two the count. Their stolen base leader is Tomlinson with eight. And Pratt's just a freshman and he's never stolen a base in a varsity game before, so let's see if he gets adventurous out there. Two and two. Fly ball to left center. That might be trouble. 
It does drop. Pratt advances to second. Fervent and I able to get uh, over there. That was a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Nice job by Smith. He kept his hands back, and he was able to put it in play and get it in the air. And he just did find a, some piece of turf. And Northfield starts at the top of the sixth with back-to-back -back singles. Let's bring up Ethan Bruce. Let's see if he's in bunt mode. Bruce has struck out twice. He shows bunt. He gets it down. Reinerts goes down. This is going to be a tough play, and that's going to be a base hit. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles to start the sixth. Tanner just uh, got caught up in the dirt there on the mound and not able to get to that one. Second baseman, Dylan Osborne. Now Reiner's in a lot of trouble. Bases loaded, nobody out. Infield in. He bunts. It's fair. Throw to first. Out. And the game is tied. Sacrifice 2-4. Zink, who's now playing second base. Handle the throw from Cypher. That's the first out of the inning. On the play, Bruce goes from first to second. Smith from second to third. And Pratt scores. Good bunt by Osborne. Now they've got the go-ahead run at third with only one out. And they've got... Bruce over at second, and the count is 1-0 and on Mason Fisher. Fisher struck out on both at-bats. Well, you'd have to think of another bunt. Can't be out of the question here, and Rochester's got to play the infield in. He does bunt, and it's fouled off, 1-1. One one. Softball update, Rochester has defeated Northfield 11-2. Hmm. Lady Z is now 2-2 two two in the conference. Thanks, Coach Stasiak. Hi, two and one. We got to give Northfield's hitting coach a lot of credit. They just laid down two beautiful bunts. I mean, mm -hmm. they're playing small ball right now, and it's working for them. Swing and a miss, two and two. Got him swinging. Got him to chase. Strikeout number one for Reinerts. Strikeout number nine for Rochester pitchers in this game. Second and third, two outs, and Jaden Truman's the batter. First pitch foul. Truman has singled, and he struck out looking his last time up. TRC baseball. It's never <laughs> easy. Outside. Yeah, you're right. Oh, you're right. Is that the new uh, marketing campaign we're working on? <laughs> TRC baseball. It's never easy. Yeah. Trademark that phrase after the game. Strike two called. Just caught the corner on that one. That was a nice pitch. There it is. Northfield started 0-5. And and they're now 3-8. They've gone 3-3 three three since. Lost to Wabash 4 to nothing on Wednesday. And they'll Got him. Got him. Yeah. Got that call. Well, that was a big out there for uh, Tanner. One run, three hits, no errors, two left in the top of the six. At the end of five and a half, Rochester and Northfield are tied 3-3, and you're watching RTC Tanner. Moving into the bottom of the six, the Northfield Norse get one run in the top. 
And tie it up at three, but it could have been a lot worse than that, Val. They had uh, bases loaded with no outs, right? Yep. And uh, only able to get one run across. A good job there by Tanner Reinert settling in and getting that strike out for out number three. And coming up first for the Zebras, it's going to be Hunter Campbell. And they have to uh, get the bats going again. All right, Campbell, Faverdin, McLaughlin do up. So the order will flip over. If, if one of these two guys can get on, that would be so big. I mean, Campbell and Faverda both run pretty well. And he'd love Tarek to bat with somebody on base. Strike, good pitch. That was at the knees. Campbell hitting 250 on the year coming into the game, 6 for 24, and make it 6 for 26. He's 0 for 2 today. Curve away, 1 and 1. Hunter with two, two of his uh, six hits have gone for extra bases, both doubles. He has four RBIs. Popped up foul. We're in the sixth inning. Truman walked McLaughlin to lead off the game. That was his only walk, and he's not struck out anybody. Hit by pitch. Well, that's not what Truman wanted to do. Left fielder, Colton Faverda. Colton Faverda, and let's see if Colton's up to bun. He hammered a double his first time up, and he grounded a third his last time. Again, do you give Campbell a chance to steal, or do you just bunt? The, what you worry about is if he lays down a sacrifice bunt, do they pitch around McLaughlin? Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. He is safe. Campbell steals second. Swing and a miss, so the count is 0 and 1. Bunt. Throw to first. Not in time. Safe. Bunt single. The second baseman was late. The first baseman was charging. The second baseman had to cover. Truman had to hesitate, and it's a base hit. Shortstop, Tarek McLaughlin. First and third, nobody out, and now that'll bring up Tarek McLaughlin. Well, you, uh... The infield has to play in now. Pitch is low and away, and Faverda will take second. Call that another stolen base. That's almost like something you see in softball. Mm -hmm. They're just giving the second base. Now to how do they pitch to Tarek down on the count 1-0. and oh. Fly ball, left field, Crow. Catches it. Tagging. Trying to score and scoring. Throw back to second. Out for a double play. It's, uh, Rochester takes a 4-3 lead. Double play, 7-5-4. But it is a uh, sack fly. And so Tarek with another big RBI, and the Zebras lead 4-3. Nobody on, two out, and that'll bring up Ethan Medina. Outside. Center fielder, Ethan Medina. That's the, the second time, Val, where we've had a, a runner get thrown out, and now instead of having one on with, with one out, we have nobody on with two outs. Yep, Ratchet, that's the third guy thrown out on the bases for the Zebras in this game. Had, uh, Bumford was thrown out trying to score from first on a double back in the second inning. Elliott thrown out at third in the fifth inning, and now... Faverda nabbed there. 3-0 the count to Medina. Strike. Reinert's on deck. He 
you might again you might give Ethan a, I know Ethan's a terrific hitter but you might even give him another take sign here yeah I really like to see Reinhardt's bat in this inning pulled the second baseman throw to first is in time Osborne handles it easily for Rochester in the bottom of the sixth they score one on one hit no errors Nobody left. At the end of six innings, Rochester leads Northfield 4-3. to three. And You're watching RTC TV. Moving into the top of the seventh. Zebras back in front with the run they scored in the bottom of the sixth. Val, Rochester being really aggressive on the bases, but it's cost them a couple of uh, outs, uh, three to be exact. Here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that last one was being aggressive, though. I think that was just kind of... Careless. Yeah, it, it, that, that one was probably the closest one to being careless. Yeah, around it a little, little bit too much. Uh, mm -hmm. The first two were kind of good plays by Northfield. Um, but the, that one might have been carelessness. But anyway, Zebras are three outs away from a win, and Ethan Medina is now out on the mound. And he'll have to face the top of that Northfield order with Tomlinson, McKillop, and Snyder. And, I, you know, I was talking with Ethan... Um, after the Southwood game, and he talked about, you know, he's comfortable going after right-handed hitters, and he, he gets on those with that slider and that curveball. He gets in on the hands of those right-handed hitters. They can't extend their arms, and they can't put a lot of weight into their swing, and he was just very effective with that, and I'll be curious to see how he does today because he's, I mean, you know, Tomlinson, he's a very good right-handed hitter. He was one for three, but even the two times they, get, they got him out, he hit the ball fairly well. He singled in the first, lined to short, excuse me. He singled in the first, he lined to second in the second, and he lined to left back in the fifth. Medina trying to save the win for Tanner Reinerts. Zebra's trying to go to 4 0 in the TRC. Baseball update. North Judson leads Winnemac 5-4, to four, top of the sixth. Softball. Winnemac defeats North Judson 6-1 to one over to Winnemac Town Park today. You know, I give North Judson softball a lot of credit. They, they don't have the greatest record. I think they've only got, what, one or two wins? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they, they made Pioneer go the full game and 6-1 and to one against a good Winnemac team. Yep. First pitch from Medina, Dylan Tomlinson is outside for a ball, 1-0. Softball, top of the seventh, North Miami leads Valley, 4 to nothing. Hmm. Where'd you say that one was at? It's at Valley. At Valley. It's a, been a great Valley offense, but they've been shut out so far today by Lauren Duncan. 2-0. 3-0. Yeah, I almost think that she was at the Rochester Prom. Today on Inside Edition? Yeah, I think she was. Strike, three and one. You know, we, we got a little sports here, a little ESPN stuff. Yeah. We got a little yeah. TMZ, a little inside. Uh, you know, you I've know. always talked about these teenagers kind of like celebrities. And three and two. There's the hat. Yeah. I would say he, he did the first uh, four pitches. I asked him about that. He said, he, he has no idea. He can't explain it. Uh, I can tell you why. He doesn't have it tight enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. 3-2. <laughs> Line to center. Base hit. Elliot is now playing center field. McKillop is the batter. Throw to first runner back. Pitch away. Was that a pitch out? No. No. 
Who's that in right field? Uh, no, no. I think it's Gavin you or Bumper. I can't tell. So Tanner Reinhardt is not in the game right now. Campbell's still at third. Ball three. Zebra's trying to hang on to a one-run lead here in the seventh and improve to 4-0 in the conference. Strike. Seems like... Ethan's fastball is kind of moving all over the place. Base on balls, a walk for McKillop. First and second, nobody out. For their number three hitter, Jacob Snyder. First baseman, Jacob Snyder. Snyder has struck out, grounded to second, grounded to third. Now there's a meeting on the mound. Talking with you know, Ethan said he's been throwing to Jake since they were kids. Yeah. They, were, they didn't play uh, last summer. They didn't play on the same team. Jake moved on to a different team, but they've played on the same Warsaw Attack team for a long time. So he's very comfortable throwing to Jake. He's, shows bunt and fouls it off. Well, we saw the, the Norse do some damage with the uh, the bunt in the earlier inning. Mm -hmm. So, see if the Zebras can... Uh... Popped up. up. Oh. It is a fair ball. It's a fair ball. Out. Throw to second. Safe. What? Throw to, Is it going to be a throw to first? Should be a double play. Should be out at first. The home plate umpire pointed fair. Out. It is a double play. Two, five, four, three. It was a fair ball. He didn't catch it. The home plate umpire immediately pointed fair. The Snyder didn't run. So we have First, Campbell tagged Tomlinson. He didn't have to because of force. He threw to second. McKillop realized what was going on. He was safe. Remember, the infield fly rule does not apply in a bunt, and I know that for some reason. <laughs> I don't know many rules, but I know that it does not apply in a bunt. Foul ball. So after so, all that, we've got one on at second for the Norse with two outs. Jake Seifer dropping that ball might have actually been a good thing for the Zebras. Northfield down to their final out. Ball two. Rosine. Did he offer? Nope. No. He singled, grounded to third, and singled again. Two for three, he scored a run. It's kind of hard with the field up, you know, at second with the runner at second. You can't really... Comes two and one. Two and one to Rosine. Big situation here. Two and two. Northfield had bases loaded, nobody out in the sixth. They only got one. They had first and second with nobody out here in the seventh. They haven't scored yet. Two and two. Just high. Three and two. Got him. And the Zebras win it. Fastball over the outside corner. And the Zebras win another one run game. Wow. These MSD at Wabash County Schools are giving Rochester everything they want. Got to give them a lot of credit. Southwood and Northfield both. Uh, Nail biters. 
Good ball game tonight. A strange double play. In the top of the seventh, there were no runs. How did, how did you score that one? 2-5-4-3. Two, 2-5-4-3. Two, Catcher three. to the third baseman to the second baseman to the first baseman. <laughs> that's got to be your first 2-5-4-3 double play ever. Yeah, that's <laughs> truly uh, truly around the horn. That, yeah. That's around the horn plus. <laughs> 